we're now going to talk about vector fields. So a vector field on R2, on the plane, is a function which associates to each point, instead of a number, now it's a vector, a two-component vector. So for each point x, y, there's a vector f of x, y, and we could call its components p of x, y, and q of x, y. We can draw a little picture, so here's the x, y plane. Um, and then at, e at each point, there's a little arrow. So at this point here, this arrow is the vector f of x, y at that point. So if this is x, y, then this arrow is the vector f of x, y. Okay, and the vector field sort of could point in different directions at different points. Some, some points it could be longer or shorter. Some points it could be the zero vector, so it's just a dot. So there's a, a picture of a vector field. Um, a vector field on R3 is the same thing, except now you have a three-component vector at each point. So a vector field on R3 So for each point x, y, z, there's a vector f of x, y, z, and we could call its components, say, p of x, y, z, q of x, y, z, r of x, y, z. So it's three real-valued functions, or one vector-valued function, on R3. Um, and we could also talk about vector fields that are defined on some domain in R2 or R3, not in the whole space. Um, and these are important in various physical problems. So here's some physical examples um, of things in physics that can be modeled by a vector field. So we could talk about wind velocity. So if you're outside on a windy day, at each point, the air is moving in some direction at some speed. So that gives you a vector at each point. So maybe the wind is swirling around and going up some places and down some other places. Um, so it's not the same vector at every point, but at every point there's a vector saying in which direction is the wind blowing and how fast. And of course, this is just a mathematical model. It's not exactly a vector field, because if you look at a really small scale, you'll just see a bunch of molecules bouncing around randomly in all different directions. But on a large scale, you can get a good model of the wind velocity as a vector field. So if you're trying to forecast the weather and you want to write down equations which describe how the wind velocity is going to change over time, then a good mathematical model to use for the wind velocity is a vector field. Um, Vector fields also arise as force fields. So, for example, the gravitational field. So this points in the direction in which gravity is pulling you. And the longer the vector, the stronger the force of gravity. So, like, if the Earth is over here, then the surface of the Earth Gravi gravitational field is pulling down towards the Earth. If you go further away, it's also pointing towards the Earth, but not as strongly, because the further away you are, the weaker the force is. Okay? Um, also, in electricity and magnetism, there's the electric field. which describes how electric charges are attracted, um, and, and so on. So, so these are very important in physics. Um, let's write down an example. So here's how the gravitational field works. So I don't require you to know anything about physics for this course. I'm just showing you this as an example. Okay, so we in three-dimensional space, let's say at the origin we have a point of mass m. And I want to say, what is the 
gravitational field. Um, so the, the law of gravity, so the gravitational attraction, so if I have another body, say little m, it's being pulled towards big M. So let's say this, this mass of big M is nailed to the origin, so it can't move. And how, how much is it going to pull this little mass M? So the gravitational attraction is some constant G times the product of the two masses divided by the square of the distance between them. So here R denotes the radius. I guess really I should call this rho. That's what we would call it in spherical coordinates, but let's call it R. Okay. Um, and it points towards the origin. Um, and, well, we, the gravitational field is something which doesn't depend on the little mass m. It's just the force um, created by the big mass m. So let's write this as gm over r squared times little m. Okay, so this is sort of the force of gravity um, exerted by the big mass m at the origin. But I want to write this in the form of a vector. So I need a vector pointing towards the origin. So the, so the gravitational field is a vector pointing towards the origin Um, of magnitude gm over r squared. So how do I write down a vector like that? So what is this vector f at a point, say, r equals what? Well, so I want, so the well, first let's write down an equation for a unit vector pointing towards the origin. So unit vector pointing to the origin, well, I take, the, take r, so this is the vector which describes my point, and let's divide it by its length to make it a unit vector and now that's a unit vector pointing away from the origin. So if I put a minus sign, now that's a vector pointing to the origin. Okay, now I can take this unit vector and multiply it by the magnitude I want it to have. So I can take gm over the distance to the origin. That's now the length of r squared. And then, so that's the magnitude I want. And then I have this unit vector pointing in the direction I want. So I have minus r over r absolute value. So I get minus g m vector r over length of r cubed. So that's the that's the gravitational field. And this is defined at all points except the origin. So as you go towards the origin, the magnitude of this vector field becomes infinite. Um, really, if you try to compress all the mass into a point, you would eventually get a black hole. Um, but that's not really the topic of this course. Anyway, so that's an example of a vector field. And we're going to do some math with vector fields.